I'm gonna show you how to make homemade bread. There's thousands of bread recipes out there with different flours. Some have fresh yeast, some have dried yeast, some have no yeast. And there's so much choice, but I wanna give you the most basic one because there's so many of you that have never made bread before. So first of all, get yourself 650 milliliters of tepid water. That means kind of like warmish. And we're gonna put that into a large bowl. And I'm gonna add one sachet of dried yeast. Give it a nice little mix up with a fork. If you wanna put a little pinch of sugar in there or a little honey, you can do that as well. It just helps to wake the yeast up. And if you leave it for a couple of minutes, you'll see the bubbles starting. Now those bubbles are carbon dioxide, okay? And that carbon dioxide will become the little bubbles in your spongy bread. And listen, if you haven't got yeast, please don't worry about it. You can make flatbread, fantastic. So we've got one kilo of strong flour that we're gonna add into this water. So I'll add most of that kilo, holding just a little bit back. And I'm simply gonna mix it up with a fork. So I'm using a fork at the moment because it keeps your hands clean. I'm going to give it a nice pinch of salt and then you can use your hands. Now look, whether it's adults or kids, this is a brilliant thing to do. So you can see it's getting sticky. So if you get sticky hands, just take some of that flour and dust your hands down, move it around and we can pretty much clean the side of the bowl. So look, let's get that bowl out. Give it a little dusting with my hand. I can get rid of this board. So there's no right or wrong way to knead. Just kind of move it, sort of move it apart like this, stretch it, and you can move it around like that. You can pick it up and throw it down. All the different flavors you can do, the shapes, the sizes, in a tin, on a tray, in a cheesecake mold, little ones, big ones. Do you flavor it? Do you take leftovers and put it inside a bread? Do you do pizza, pizzetta, focaccia, calzone? Like there's so many different things you can do. And I think, now more than ever, it's quite nice to do this. Actually, I can already feel the yeast working. Why? Because it's warm. Now, I think it's had a good knead. I'll give it a little dusting from a height. I'll use my two hands just to go underneath it like this. A little bit of flour on top. Just put your hands underneath it like that to create a little ball. And then, my friends, there's your dough. That's going to double in size like that, it's gonna be amazing. Let me show you. So I'll put this in a bowl like that and we'll cover it with like a damp cloth. And in about an hour, hour and a half, this will happen. And have a little look, same quantity, same recipe. Look at that, very cool. Look at the comparison. So what we wanna do is now knock it back, okay? So we'll do that by punching it like that and you'll see it just like, boof, collapse. Once you've knocked it back, you know, you can just take that out. We'll give it another little short knead, just for a second. You can see all the little bubbles, see? Look at that. So we'll knock that out. Now, this kilo batch of dough is enough to make two large loaves. So let's turn half of this dough into a sort of rustic loaf, okay? So I'll just slice this in half, like that. Look at the bubbles, guys, look at the bubbles. <laughs> it smells amazing already. So I'll get a regular tray, give it a little dust. I'll just give it one little knead like this. So as you knock that air out, if you wanted to, you could shape this into anything you want. You could make it into a nice round loaf. I quite personally like making it into a sort of rustic slipper. Just give it a little tap like that and just stretch it. Now, we're gonna let that prove again for about half an hour to an hour, and that will double in size, right? So, just have a look at it now. You want it to be at least twice as big, at least, and just put it in a draft-free place, bit of flour on the top like that. I quite like doing it rustic like that because it kind of breaks and puffs up and it just looks really, really rustic. So that, I'm gonna leave for an hour. Okay, so the room smells absolutely incredible. I proved those two breads until doubled in size, then whacked them in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 35 minutes. And here goes. This is our lovely rustic loaf. Lovely, look at that. 
spongy, simple, nice thin crust. And you know, if you haven't got any bread available in the supermarkets, then have a go.